Das ist ein Griffel von äh, der Wachstafel, ah. die ich von den Polen gekauft habe. Mhm. Ach ja, richtig. Das, das ist hier zum Glatschaben wieder. Ne? Ich habe die aus Eisen natürlich. Hier. Ich habe hm. gefunden aus Eisen, witzigerweise. Hm. Eine oder zwei von den Dingen. Aus Bronze auch. Ja, 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 ja. Okay, so, okay, um, yeah. so we're in the process of uh, making the socket. Making the socket, yeah. So, well, um, the thicker and the shorter and the wider they are, the easier, the easier. they are to make. Yeah, okay. Um, so, but then, of course, it was like... Uh, several attempts, uh, especially Minas, who is not really a blacksmith, he's an archaeologist, mm -hmm. but he has some experience and he really wanted to learn it, which yeah. took us almost half a day, so he mm -hmm. got the first one well done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we also used just normal iron, ST37, like the general construction iron, which is not the best material for it. It's mm -hmm. uh, much easier to weld uh, real uh, lumery iron. Much mm -hmm. easier to weld. It's much more heat resistant. So the whole thing would have been a lot easier if, if we you were using only. authentic material, yes, yes. which I do nowadays. And now yeah, it's like half I the work or something. Yeah. Okay. Let's say now that this whole thing has worked here out mm -hmm. here. We have now welded all together. Um, uh, there's one of these things that is really good with this kind of separate construction of this and that. Mm -hmm. There are other ways of making a spearhead, not used in the Viking Age, but earlier these mm -hmm. Hillero Bodal finds yeah, where, the the ones. Uh, where yeah. the spearhead is forged and then um, they forge out of this the material for the socket, they overlap it and weld the whole so damn thing. It's all made yeah. from one piece. Yes, one piece. And there, of course, you have a higher fuck up factor. <laughs> uh, if you get it wrong in the end, then all this mm. work is lost. Right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, probably not a problem for this, yeah. uh, for this Iron Age blacksmith who did nothing but spear. Mm. Heads. Yeah, so um, they definitely were the but experts. But it would be, yeah. 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 Okay, so we have yeah. the socket now. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what about the wings? No. Or do you first join it to? No, uh, we don't do that because this is again the fuck up factor. It's really big with the wings. Mm -hmm. uh, you can really the things fall off. They don't weld. They burn the whole thing. A lot of things can happen. The good thing is really. So, so the one thing that for the uh, for the uh, ignorant uh, person, for ignorant person like me, looks like okay, this is probably pretty simple is very problematic. It is, and and people ask for the for the price of it, and I tell them the price, and I say if you just don't want these fire welded, yeah. it will knock actually a third off. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, something oh. like that. Wow. Yeah. it's really problematic. Even nowadays, I find this a really hard weld because now it comes. They are mm -hmm. rather thin, and they go wide. Mm -hmm. You can't weld them on like that. You just can't. It's impossible. You have oh. to do it as like little stumps and forge and forge them out later. Oh, okay. So, so, so they're much shorter as you join them to the socket. Yes, very compressed. Because, uh -huh. well, um, in the original, there's one thing that we didn't really copy. In the original, it's made like this. You can see clearly that they're made separately. These two pieces are made mm -hmm. separately, and they are put on the one side exactly on the seam, which we also did. Where is it here? Mm -hmm. Just on the seam. I think this might just be coincidental. It's no need. Mm -hmm. We thought then it holds the seam yeah. together, but yeah. it's always if it's a good weld, it it's a good weld. It will hold. It will yeah. never come loose. If it's a bad weld, that wouldn't help much. So mm -hmm. I see. Like um, or maybe it would. I don't know. However, uh, if if you weld it, you don't need this mm -hmm. kind of. Just like you don't need any kind of weird uh, mm -hmm. teeth or anything. Just weld it right, and then it's done. Uh, but you can see they're separate, and they were also made from two pieces. I think for no special reason. They just took a piece of iron and mm -hmm. weld it to another piece of iron. Mm -hmm. So they had a little foot, a little thing that looks like 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 this. Mm -hmm. Like this. And this is now weld on. Mm -hmm. To the socket you can see that that here the material goes quite over it. Yes. Yeah, There's a wide overlap. It's not like yeah. just weld straight yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, uh, which makes sense because you get a bigger surface here. You also need a lot if you want I mean the originals are quite mm -hmm. thick in the base. Mm -hmm. um, because well, they need to take up some stress, and it's uh, sure. a bit too thin. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure about our grinding here. It's it's possible that the uh, the originals went like just a little bit more in here. Mm -hmm. There's of course mm -hmm. a lot of different mm -hmm. uh, types. Uh, some are quite thin, and you wonder if they really have any meaning or not. Uh, but the original was made like this, and we just uh, we just ignored that part because it it was clearly not different materials. It was clearly no. Uh, there was not really any reason for that. Other, they just probably had. It was, was easier for them to just weld two pieces together mm -hmm. and then okay. put them there. Okay. We instead forged the same thing, like uh, some kind of a, a really plump T kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, out of one piece of iron mm -hmm. because uh, it was. Okay, so so you have this T stump and then the bar, uh, the top bar of the T goes onto the socket. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It goes onto the socket. You have to pre-shape it a little bit, so it is. Uh, you know, it, it fits, fits nicely to the round surface mm -hmm. of the socket. Mm -hmm. And then you need to heat this part here, and you need. First of all, you need to hold it in some way. 
So uh, we first tried it with uh, with uh, just welding it on here a little bit, like with, mm -hmm. the, with the electro welding, and that's a bit of a cheating. So you can just um, attach an, another rod here, some kind of a piece. Basically, when you forge this, you can yeah. just leave something on it, so, so you can hold onto oh, it I see. without actually holding this with the tongue. Ah, okay, right? okay. Uh, but uh, of course, the easiest way will always, in, like we, like it's what what I would do now. But just take electro welder and put a point here and a point there, just to. Fix it on to the fix surface. it uh, yeah. temporarily. But simply also because I'm alone in a forge normally. Yeah. They've never been alone. It's quite easy to have someone who knows the temperatures, heats one part because both parts, the socket and that one, needs to be heated to the uh, heated to the uh, welding temperature. <laughs> Where okay, so you have the the the, the T shape things are being welded on yes um, yeah and in order to achieve that you need to heat both again to the to the same degrees same temperature yep yeah, then you need an anvil like this kind of horn thing where mm -hmm. uh, where where this tube okay. fits on mm -hmm. I or see. I actually use the same core that I used earlier to weld yeah. it. it has the um, it has the uh, advantage that you can actually heat it a bit and again mm -hmm. it's good to have it a little bit warm warmed up to mm -hmm. 600 mm -hmm. degrees because uh, this thing also cools down it's not, not so critical anymore and then you need on a given signal like if it's two working together both take it out uh, you stick this uh, core into it put it somewhere where it kind of has a sturdy uh, a sturdy hold to it mm -hmm. uh, on a, a type of anvil with some with some rests on it uh, then the other guy puts uh, the uh, this T thing right in position and then you hammer first in the middle mm -hmm. two three firm easy blows and then the sides mm -hmm. this kind of little T's there and once it's stuck uh, it's the yeah. first weld it's kind of weld on but uh, well, not 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 a hundred percent then you go back to the forge and then you heat the whole thing again as one to welding temperature mm -hmm. and that's why they need to be short and stubby because uh, you heat it and it's always the thinner parts heat up a lot faster than the mm -hmm. bigger parts mm -hmm. also uh, prominent parts uh, will always heat up first because mm -hmm. they do f uh, faster because they just get the full blast of the of the furnace um, you have to be really careful with it and if you would try to make it with thin pieces they would just burn off so it needs to be thick pieces, okay that's which why get even oh, yeah, thicker, okay. yeah. got it mm -hmm. uh, and then when it's all well on then you weld the other one on Mm -hmm. Which is of course uh, is more complex than welding the first one on. Yeah, well, they, 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 well, do you have a more complex socket shape now? Uh, yeah, and, and also you need to put it exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. it's supposed of to course, be. yeah, the first one doesn't yeah. really matter. We we made one that we put a little bit to the side, and it's like mm -hmm. you can't move it. Yeah. And also you have these kind of seconds of of putting it in position, yeah. and uh, it's really thing. Mm -hmm. So so later I tended to just electro weld them. Um, heat the whole thing as it is, and then mm. weld them on. At least they can't mm. move. Mm -hmm. um, it adds a bit to the problem that you all the time need to whole, heat the whole thing, so yeah. you burn off more material. But it's still a lot easier. Mm -hmm, uh, but that's how you weld them on, no matter how you hold them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess with a professional medieval blacksmith, with a good helper yeah. who also can heat this separately for himself, he's mm. like, okay, I'm almost there. How are you? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I'm always there. They both know. Uh, now, yeah, if, I, if you help me, you yeah. will know how yeah. hard it needs yeah. to be. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't yeah. work. Let me well, just close the door. Rough. So now we have weld the wings on, mm -hmm. uh, and then we give them a rough forging to the shape, like more mm -hmm. or less, yeah. uh, a little bit less than you really want to, just keep it a bit uh, sturdier and all mm -hmm. that, because now comes the final coup de gras. <laughs> uh, now, you now you need to weld the blade to the socket. To the socket. And this was something that we thought was really, really difficult. It was oh, yeah? Really, yeah, it was really, uh, well, they, you know, you, the, the slags can't go anywhere and you could see it clearly in the original that uh, the tube here, the socket, uh, mm -hmm. was forged, it was not used as a round piece, it was forged square. Okay, so originally the, the cross-section of uh, the socket here is uh, it's a square. It's, yeah, square. Yeah, it's, it's a square. And, and this likewise on the on This the one is also square and, and a little bit, uh, you know, like tapered, mm -hmm. so it fits in there. Mm -hmm. And you heat this one and this one you heat it. A little bit, and then you kind of hammer it in there, so it gets mm -hmm. a tight fit. So, so the socket actually goes uh, over uh, it's the goes stub over. of the uh, exactly, and then you hammer it in, blade. so it already stays together quite well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then you heat the whole thing here mm -hmm. uh, to the welding temperature again. And uh, well, in the cross section, you can see that it's been square mm -hmm. and later forged round, mm -hmm. which means since you if you forge something, uh, then only the surface moves normally yeah uh, well it depends on temperature so you can see that uh, that they they forged it round you can clearly see how the how the uh, the grains follow so it was a rounded forge 
uh, forged round, uh, not just ground off, um, um, but the inside didn't move quite that much, so you can mm -hmm. see it's so still you can square, see the original and you can uh, see the shape. ends, yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, and you uh -huh. can see the ends of these yeah, uh, bars. I see, as well, I see. So, I see. Yeah. so and they, they turned out it was a uh, scooty really it makes sense to do it because then you can weld it like it's now square. So you heat it to the right temperature. You put it on the anvil and you hammer here, mm -hmm. which means you do weld this one and mm -hmm. also that one. Of course, the anvil mm -hmm. does the same work. Mm -hmm. Then you turn 90 degrees and you weld this one. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you haven't welded is these little corners here because it didn't get a bead yet. So you heat it up again, and then you hammer over the corners. You make it eight cornered. Mm -hmm. So it's octagonal. Yeah, uh, octagonal, and uh, uh, or possibly you just do a double weld just to be on the safe mm -hmm. side, and then you just forge it round. Mm -hmm. I Done. See. So, okay. And this was actually something that was done in like five minutes. It was no oh, trouble right. whatsoever. Oh, really? <laughs> it's the easiest, and and uh, we really thought that would be would be problematic, mm -hmm. but it wasn't mm -hmm. at all. Um, and you can really define how much space you want here. It doesn't move much. Uh, and originally it was like 1.3 centimeters or so uh, overlapping mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. You have to play a little bit. Uh, these uh, corners here need to be yeah. pre-shaped a bit so they yeah. go nicely in and so on. Yeah. But it's details. This weld is really easy and I use it for all spears. Also for Iron Age spears where mm -hmm. they didn't use it because I just improved the technique. And <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot easier than the other yeah, technique. Yeah, I see. I see. Possibly also because uh -huh. I'm used okay. to it. Yeah. So, so, and then, uh, then, so, so then we have... Um, uh, and we have the spear and then uh, the rest is uh, polishing uh, well, yeah, well, as I said earlier polishing. it was not really forged yet to the final yeah so now you have opportunity uh, to adjust by forging a bit here mm -hmm. uh, the size here you can just stretch mm -hmm. it a little bit mm -hmm. then uh, you widen the blade as much mm -hmm. as you want mm -hmm. or can yeah uh, we had a bit of a problem because we did something uh, well, not really as it should be, and then you have mm -hmm. to widen a bit more here, mm -hmm. which then causes. Okay, so this is the process when uh, when uh, this shallow wave uh, came to be. Uh, yes, a little bit oh, yeah, because yeah, okay. we needed to. Yeah. Uh, we uh, somehow we didn't have enough material on one yeah. side. As I mm -hmm. said, it was a it was yeah. a bit of a mm -hmm. you know, dude, let's do yeah. it uh, yeah. project. So so after uh, assembly, it still goes back onto the forge, and you yep. still do uh, now uh, you um, do the fine, fine tuning. With the hammer, yeah, and then yeah. now you can just adjust, adjust mm. it exactly mm. as you want it. Then you let it cool down slowly. You glow it a couple of times to uh, restore the uh, the grains uh, in the steel, which are usually really bad by now because of all these weldings. So uh, and then then you let it cool down slowly, and then you start the filing and uh, mm. grinding and so mm. on and so on. Mm. But then it's just basic uh, mm. work. Of, mm. And then of course comes the hardening and the in the tempering. end, of course, there is a the hardening and. Uh, this was a part that was not uh, checked on the blade, how hard it was, and if mm. there was any hardening lines like the hamon. I think we can just forget this idea anyway, just perish the thought, because the steel here is, uh, this part, only this part really was steel, the rest is mm -hmm. kind of mixture mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, they, so they, they most likely just hardened the whole blade, um, and as it usually is, this part here might be a little bit unhardened, and, mm -hmm. uh, I see. so it's mm -hmm. just the whole thing hardened, mm -hmm. and that's it. So. Mm. Okay. straightforward and not much can happen to such a thick blade it doesn't bend or anything mm, it's really yeah. Easy. yeah and then of course people would always ask uh, how many hours but um, that's uh, that was the first one the first right one, yeah. so nowadays uh, what you say uh, uh, this is how many days or how long a time I always find it extremely hard to say when people ask me about an illustration how long yeah, did how you long actually work yeah. on it. Um, it I well, I, and I don't work by the hour, so uh, yeah, I might course. work uh, five hours or twelve. Hours yeah, but you may have to make a rough yeah. es estimate yeah, if somebody orders something. It takes something. about uh, two to three days to make one. Mm. Yeah. You have to reckon that something goes wrong on one of them. I one see. out of five. I see. Uh, something happens which just uh, yeah. well, it's lethal and you can't use it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's about because at any step something can go wrong and then you have to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. start from scratch or abandon part of it. Mm, exactly, or yeah. make something okay. other out of it. So that's well, it. I'm really looking forward to putting that on a <laughs> on a shaft and uh, sharpen it and then uh, do some testing with it. I'm also interested uh, if I can come up with uh, what these wings were actually for because my, my hypothesis is that um, generally I work from the assumption that Weapon design is never arbitrary, mm -hmm. so uh, if it is work to put these on, um, then probably they have a function. Um, we'll find out. Right now I don't remember if the original actually had a hole somewhere or not. Regarding uh, riveting? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, do, I just don't, I just can't remember, but it's a long time ago. The only people want a hole, and I know there is some with holes to rivet mm -hmm. it, but there must be, there's also some without, I'm pretty sure about okay. that. So I don't know how that is, mm. how that works. So with the, with the, um, 
uh, with it being so so thick here, uh, I would make the shaft in such a way that um, uh, I, I cut off material from the terminal of the shaft so that in the end it will be one surface, be done, yeah. one surface with uh, the steel socket here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, well, then well, just feel free to drill a hole. I yeah. think it's just pretty straightforward. Yeah, or just. The, the general assumption yeah. is that these, apart from the really esoteric ones, that these have some aerodynamic effect on, on horseback riding. Oh yeah, which is sure. Like the best one ever. Yeah. From, uh, <laughs> well, was? that's pretty ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, but I can just. Well, I would rather assume this is something uh, for um, spear fencing or possibly pulling uh, uh, pulling open um, shields and then go in. Who knows? Something. I mean, they were yeah. both used uh, on horseback as well as um, on against on, them. On foot. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the general assumption that I heard so far is that this thing keeps it from going too deep into the enemy's body. So if you're riding, you can actually easily. You mean like on a boar spear? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like on a boar spear is the idea. The problem, well, the, the uh, what shall I say, it stretches the whole thing a little bit, knowing that many of them are longer, much longer mm -hmm. than this. So if you're already 45 centimeters in, mm -hmm. I think another What's the 10 point? or 20 doesn't really matter. You want yeah. to get that out when you yeah. scallop by, yeah. or maybe you can do it yeah. anyway. The idea of them stopping is from boar spears, but hunting a boar is different from from killing humans. Uh, I'm not so expert with the killing of the humans you are, perhaps. <laughs> but uh, with the well, boar, it is like this. You really need to go deep not. in, and then you want him to stop running yeah. just right at you, yeah. like this German South yeah. piece, which works yeah. really well. Um, but it's different, so I, I really doubt a little bit this, mm. especially for the long ones. This mm. is kind of stopping the body. Mm. Uh, well, there must be a context for it. Um, uh, you find if, out. If, yeah, if I mean, um, if uh, most people think about uh, spears being just for uh, thrusting, but uh, there are contexts where I mean, if, if two people thrust at each other, it's like a gambling. So, um, like in a um, late medieval treatises, you would rather clear the space in front of you with a strike and then extend into um, a thrust. Um, so in context like that, something like this would make a lot of sense. Uh, so uh, if there was any kind of spear fencing like we see in late medieval uh, treatises, something like this always makes sense because it's almost like a cross guard on a sword. And a cross guard on a sword yeah, works well yeah. in this context. But um, yeah, so first well, we would... We're now a bit in the wild guessing, yeah. right? Yeah, and exactly. Uh, so, so we'll just I had one mount briefly it. the idea about this, uh, you know, what later becomes the Hellebarde mm -hmm. birds. Mm -hmm. um, generally they assume it's some kind of an axe that finally acquired a spear on top or something like mm -hmm. that, or the other way around. And uh, it could have developed out of these things here. Mm -hmm. You have a spear with something on it, and you could just work on it. It would be cool to have mm -hmm. a little bit more... Something. Well, I mean, if you have pole weapons against pole weapons, yeah, yeah? if you have... Uh, if you just have straight poles and... Uh, um, you want to control opposing uh, poles, and then with a pole, all you can do is just uh, whack, it, whack it aside. But mm. uh, if you have something like that, you can intercept and just push them aside. Mm. Like, um, um, like uh, I found out about, about the Falchion, uh, which is basically a medieval sword that has um, uh, has an addi additional edge because it widens to the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and um, people have all kinds of theories about the Falchion, that it gives it more weight so that the cut is more powerful, but then again the origins are super thin. Mm -hmm. So, um, But when you actually use it in fencing, you find out that, um, uh, um, that if you have something that if you have something that is wide at the end versus something that is not, then um, you have the chance to actually, with the wide end, press mm -hmm. it away, which mm -hmm. you couldn't do if you have two pointy things. You just slide off. So uh, with um, with uh, something that has a socket here, if there's an opposing spear, you can actually control spears. Mm -hmm. Right? You can just cat. You can catch them yeah? mm -hmm. and, and and stop them. Like in reenactment, they do it with the Dane axes a lot. That mm -hmm. when the spears come, they just push it down. Push it down yeah. But you can't do it with a spear. Yep. You can only do it with an axe. So. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But we all when we'll we go see. to reenactment, then they like this a lot because you can attach a banner to it. Yeah, but there are easier <laughs> ways to make something exactly. that <laughs> and to make to make something to attach a banner to. Well, anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm really looking forward to experimenting with that uh, wonderful thing, and um, we'll see how it works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this too, and uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Ha, 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 ha.